Hello, my name is Dr Paul Wicks and I'm the Director of Research and Development at Patients Like Me. Our ALS community is now 3,500 members strong and through our unique platform allows users to share their outcomes, find a patient like them and learn more about their condition. Today I'd like to show you some of our advanced new features. Primary lateral sclerosis or PLS is a slowly progressing form of ALS that is particularly rare. In fact, the largest sample in the scientific literature is only about 20 patients. Through our website, we now have data from 116 patients with PLS, and we've used their ALS FRS data to generate the world's first progression curves for people with PLS. Rather than appearing to be outliers on the standard ALS curve, PLS patients can now see how they compare to other PLS patients just like them. Our Google Mapping feature is now available to all site users through our advanced search tool. This map shows the distribution of our users in the United States, whereas this map shows the overlay of the 2002 US population density data. When I merge the two together, you can see that we're increasingly confident that our sample is representative. Patients are now able to zoom down to their state and even to their town to see other patients that might live nearby. Our treatment system recently underwent a major upgrade that involved integrating a drug database to ensure that our patients are entering more robust information about their treatments, such as the correct dosage. We've also added the capability for treatment reports to display the perceived efficacy, adherence, burden and side effects for each treatment. All this data is available live from our website. Perhaps the most exciting tool we have is a prototype system we developed in response to a potentially groundbreaking study published by an Italian group in the academic journal PNAS. When they reported that lithium carbonate appears to delay the progression of ALS, many of our patients started taking the drug off-label via their own doctors. While the original study was conducted only 16 patients on lithium, by the end of 2008 we had some 300 patients who reported taking the drug. We developed a patient-led study tool that allowed individual patients to track their lithium dosage, blood levels, side effects and progression rates and aggregated this data to look for any effects. Right now, we do not see an effect, certainly not of the magnitude reported in the Italian study. An apparent change in the slope of progression at six months is only caused by massive dropouts of participants over time, so that only those patients who perceived lithium was working for them chose to stay on the drug. More traditional randomised control trials are already underway in Europe and the United States to more conclusively establish whether lithium might work for ALS. In the future, we're working towards predictive state models which will help individuals see into their future in order to plan interventions such as wheelchairs or ventilators. Such modelling will also help patients to see if the treatments they are taking might be having any effect on their disease progression. Another development we're interested in is mapping the pathology of a disease to the individual patient's own level of function, so that, for instance, in ALS, we could infer the severity and spread of neuronal degeneration over time. These and other exciting developments are made possible by the pioneering work of our dedicated R&D team and by the medical data shared by our vibrant community of patients with life-changing illnesses. Would you like to know more? Visit patientslikeme.com.